Did your people have a spread outside of town back in the days before the Civil yeah, War? Yeah, my great-great-grandfather moved to North Carolina and built this farm with a bear. Actually, it was my people who built it. You see, I come from the line of slaves. Your great-great-grandfather yeah, built your dreams together, and then those dreams turned into nightmares for us. The Color of Justice, I think, is an interesting book because it's set in two different time frames. Uh, the first two-thirds of the book is in 1964 about a young black man, 19-year-old college student, who's been accused of murdering a 16-year-old white girl. And the town at that particular point is entirely segregated, and one 29-year-old white attorney is asked by the young man's son, a young man's mother, rather, to take the case, and he does. And in that process, his whole life changes because now he is seen as a leper, pushed out of the community. Uh, the KKK burns crosses on his, uh, on his lawn. It is a tough, tough environment. So we set 1964 in Justice, Mississippi in that way. The last third of the book is set in the same town. And his grandson comes back to the town to finish solving a mystery. And in the process, Justice has changed. Justice has a black mayor, a black police chief, a black school superintendent. And the young man walks back into a situation where at the very same age, as a lawyer, he's asked to take the case of a young white man accused of killing a young black man and the white kid's grandmother is a white supremacist. We turn everything around in black and white and show the changes and also I think show the things that need still to be changed.